And true happiness can be found in peace of the mind. Uh, maybe you think that is uh, very natural, yes. And um, if you keep mind very peaceful, you can be happy and uh, comfortable. Yeah, that's true. But you may wonder how. Yes, I will tell you that. And why all saints giants has told you the, in the importance of the peace of mind? That is another question, right? And then I will show you that also today. Uh, because Masaryu Hokawa, he's the founder of Happy Science, then our activities, the Happy Science ha activities, has started from him, started from zero. Then, nowadays, we already have over 100 countries, and he published also over 1,000 books. Then, he made speech, sermon, or lecture almost every week, sometimes twice or three times a week. He's very busy, and not only that, run school, political party, religious organization, published company. Then happy science become bigger and bigger day by day. The reason why that is started from his enlightenment as El Cantar. So now I'm talking about the contents. The starting point, that is also the peace of mind. Then I will show you one of the lectures. He already made many lectures, over 2,000. That's amazing for 26 years, 27 years. But that is one of them. Please listen to his message first. If you wish to be happy, you must maintain a calm state of mind, like a smooth, polished mirror, or like the calm surface of a lake. A mirror can reflect perfect images of the world only as long as its surface is smooth and clean. What happens if there is a single crack in it? Of course, the images are not beautiful, much less if the mirror is dirty. There is a mirror the mirror-like surface of a lake within us. The habit of daily reflection is the equivalent of polishing this mirror every day. And it is important to keep the surface of the lake within unruffled and clear, so that it can reflect the moon. We must keep the surface of the lake within us smooth so as to reflect the world, others, and above all, ourselves correctly. One basic way to accomplish this is to make a habit of setting aside some time each day to be quiet so that we can face ourselves in silence. Happiness blossoms with this kind of regularity. But looking back on my own experience, the occasions when I experienced an intense sense of happiness, these were taking walks at dusk, 
and watching the changing seasons. One such occasion was an autumn sunset, another was in January, when I was struck by the beauty of some marvellous red plum blossom in the snow. In each instance, the sense of happiness was inexplicable and of inestimable value. This kind of feeling can be described as a small ecstasy or a peak experience. Indeed, it's quite close to the enlightenment Zen Buddhism seeks. It is an amazing fact that those who have had this kind of ecstatic experience often decide to live for others. History provides us with many examples of those who had blissful moments and then the desire to live for the sake of others. In these moments, people are filled with the supreme bliss of feeling at one with the universe and feeling loved by a great being provoking a desire to share that happiness with as many people as possible. What I am asking of you is nothing special. Just keep your mind as smooth and still as the surface of a tranquil lake. I want you to know that this will bring you joy No one has the right to make others miserable. In other words, we do not need to be made miserable by what others do. We can choose our own happiness. Our resoluteness to keep the surface of the lake within shining and mirror-like will gradually and quite naturally change our attitudes towards others. If we are easily upset, we can never maintain a crystalline surface. The wisdom of not getting angry is meaningful not only from a moral point of view. Anger causes ripples which make you uncomfortable and hinder your own happiness. If you feel you have been unfairly treated, you probably get furious and want to correct the situation, feeling you deserve more. However, in doing so, you lose the most valuable treasure of all. If you are driven by anger, hold your ground and take a fresh look at the lake within. The moment you fly into a rage, you're standing on the edge of a precipice, risking a fall into an abyss from the mountain you've spent so long climbing. If you aspire to refine yourself and seek true happiness, you should never surrender to brute anger. There are two types of responsibility, direct and indirect. If someone criticizes you for causing a particular situation, you cannot run away. You must face up squarely to your direct responsibility. On the other hand, there are many cases in which you must take indirect responsibility as a result of carelessness, a lack of effort, or, in a broader sense, your lack of strength of character or integrity.
If you have failed to spend enough time considering the happiness of others, you often have to pay the debt. If you see someone has thrown a stone into your lake, make an effort to stop. Stop the ripples spreading and stay calm. Respond to angry words with calmness. You may sometimes need to respond of words of hatred with silence. Okay, he said a very simple suggestion. That is, if you can keep your mind very calm, you can find the happiness inside. And you can experience the peak experience, ecstasy. So then, very best question. What is the true happiness? <laughs> what is the true happiness for us? Maybe, for example, if you can get million dollar, <laughs> billion dollar, get from uh, get loves from others, you can be very comfortable. But what do you think? Can the million dollar guarantee you very happy? Maybe almost all of you cannot think that guarantee you very happy. Why? Because even the million dollar can make you very temporal happiness. That is called comfortable. But it will it continue? I don't think so. Can you keep that the very comfortable situation with million dollars? Mm, it's hard. Then another question is what is that? Eternal happiness, imperishable happiness. Imperishable happiness. Okay, I will show you the conclusion. That is a state. Your divine nature is activated. That's why all saints giants like Jesus Christ, Shakyamuni Buddha, Muhammad, Confucius, all saints, giants, told us that love others without expecting anything in return. That is a common point of all religions, right? Keyword is here. Buddha nature, divine nature within. When your divine nature is activated, you can be very happy. That is the conclusion. That means because Buddha nature is love itself, the deeper you dig your mind, you can find loving mind. If you against that mind, you cannot be very happy. To dig your mind deeper and deeper, you need silence, right? Shut out information outside. That's why all saints, giants, when they practice the meditation, close your eyes. <laughs> close your eyes. And just deep breathing and concentrate on your mind the moving of your mind that's why we need silence keep your mind very calm and peaceful so usually we have been governed by bodily senses. 
then we cannot activate our real power that is called divine nature within. When you are governed by your bodily senses, such as uh, worldly desires, negative thoughts, or uh, information from outside, you feel something that irritated or something. But if you look into your mind very deep, deeply, you can find you are not material existence. You are very spiritual one. So you can find that you are the spiritual being like this. Then, finally, through the meditation, in the very peace of mind, you can find the core part of your heart that is divine nature within. Since this is very bright, bright means loving, loving mind, love itself, that is connected to the Lord, God, Lord El Cantare. That's why you can have real self-confidence at that time. To find that, you need peace of mind. That's why Master said, If you want the real self-confidence, dig the, your mind deeper and deeper, and find divine nature within. So, but you may wondering, how how can I find that? Yeah, of course, meditation, prayer is very important, but you need an example, right? And okay, I will show you the one example for you. Please read it through for a while. And you can find a way. That is a story. Uh, one of the members, Ms. M, to activate your divine nature. When you activate your divine nature, you can find real happiness. So let's start. This is the story of Ms. M, who experienced becoming one with the primordial Buddha and overcame her problems. Since she was little, she had always been scolded by her very strict mother. Her mother was hard on her and constantly told her that she was a bad child. Nowadays, we may recognize this as a case of child abuse, but 40 years ago, there were many cases like this and there was not enough awareness amongst people. Their family was poor, her father and mother worked late every day, and they argued all the time. Ms. M was brought up in this environment, where she was constantly worried about when her mother would scold her. As she grew, she gradually came to question, why does my mother have to be so angry with me? Am I really such a bad child? Nonetheless, Ms. M was desperate to gain her mother's love and she worked hard helping with the house chores and in studying. When she experienced achievements such as good grades or winning in a marathon, her mother would praise her. But whenever she was not good enough, her mother was always very harsh. When Ms. M went to high school, she could not put up with this anymore and she became rebellious. Because of the resentment, she wished to get out of the house as soon as possible. So when she graduated, she joined a company far away from her home. She met her husband and she got married. However, her resentment against her mother still remained and it has always been a pain in her heart. She was always struggling to overcome low self-esteem which she had developed because her mother had always told her she was a bad child. Every time she thought about it, the grudge against her mother grew deeper. One day, her friend, whose child went to the same kindergarten as her child, gave her a book, The Laws of the Sun. 
This was her encounter with happy science. In the Laws of the Sun it says, We are all part of primordial Buddha's expression of self. We may each take pride in ourselves and act with total self-confidence. When Ms. M read this, she felt like she had been struck by lightning. She told herself, I am a child of Buddha, I cannot be a bad child. After this discovery, Ms. M joined Happy Science and determined to face her problems, such as her resentment against her mother and her low self-esteem. One time, she was meditating during a seminar at Happy Science Shoja and she felt a warmth welling up from within and she was filled with a deep sense of peace. At that moment, Ms. M strongly felt that she was one with the primordial Buddha and she was connected with him. All people are children of Buddha and we are connected with each other. When she realized this, Ms. M remembered a scene from her childhood. Her parents had both worked very hard, but her father often lost money gambling. Her mother was so stressed. She was always so harsh on Ms. M, but it was because she was also suffering at that time. Ms. M finally understood her mother's pain and felt a sense of gratitude for the woman who had devotedly supported her family. One day, her mother visited her. When she was alone, Ms. M told her that she was grateful. Mom, thank you so much for being my mother. Thank you for raising me. I'm so sorry I've never thanked you properly. Her mother was lost for words. She wept without saying a single thing. Since that day, Ms. M has let go of her resentment against her mother. She overcame the negative view of herself as a bad child, deeply believed that she was a child of Buddha, and achieved a calmness of mind which is called happiness. Amazing story, isn't it? That is a way to restore your loving mind that is called Divine Nature Within, the typical pattern. You need to realize that. First of all, you are a child of God or Buddha first. Then accept that fact. You have been loved by Him. Then, you can get distorted your mind. That is a way. So for her, the key point is, the first one is, you, she realized that I am a child of God, child of Buddha. Then, she said, not only her, all people, without exception, are children of Buddha. Then start contemplate on her life, about her mother and the father. Then, most important point for her is, key word is, understand. Reason why you cannot forgive others is, you cannot understand others. That's why you got resentment. That's why you upset toward others sometimes. But if you can understand the other's mind, why he is so oh, terrible <laughs> or something like that? Abuse. Abuse was he used to. Because da 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 da. If you understand that his situation, you can forgive him or her, even in the very hard situation. That is very key point. To restore your mind, 
to get loving mind. That's why Master said, if you don't have peace of mind, you cannot love others. That is the conclusion. Without peace of mind, no uh, uh, love, loving others. That is a conclusion. To love others, you need a peace of mind. But what disturbs you to get the peace of mind? That is called attachment. Yes, to get peace of mind, you need to remove your attachment. And think of the situation you have right now. You are in the right now. Why God has given that kind of situation for you? There is good reason. Everybody has a homework to think of. If you face up to your homework with college, you can solve all problems because God, God Buddha, has never given you the burden heavier than you can own. So, then, to restore your mind, loving mind, Master Oka show you the fourfold path. Uh, today is not the uh, uh, day uh, I'm telling you that part, but the very easily I can show you that. Love, of course, love is to give without uh, any expectation of return. That is a very, very basic one. Then, if you practice that, you, rea you will realize that you need wisdom to love others, to understand others. As I told you, as she experienced, you need to understand others. To do so, we need wisdom. More knowledge about the spiritual truths. And self-reflection. Self-reflection doesn't mean punishment. <laughs> Sometimes people have to think that is uh, punish myself and correct myself. Yeah, as a conclusion, you need to correct yourself. But that is a way. Correct the tendency of your soul. Find your tendency of your soul. What kind of person you are. And if you find the wrong way, you need to correct the tendency of your soul. Like a good doctor. And recover the true self. That is the real meaning of self-reflection. There are no such person who has original sin at all. Okay. We are originally very pure and have a loving mind that has the same power as God has. Just restore that through the self-reflection so that you can love others very much. Then, we can create a utopia on earth. If you can realize that everybody has divine nature within, you can tell that to the people and you can awake others also. Then we can open up the bright future called utopia. That is a way. Then talking about the true self and the false self. I told you, divine nature is loving mind. That means if you have hatred, anger, grudge, something like that, the very negative mind, that is not yourself. Because your mind, your divine nature, filled with just love, 
as the instinct given by God. Again, that has the same power as God has. But the possibility, you need to explore and find that and activate that to do so. Then you can realize false self means just a reaction of your bodily senses. Yes, we have instinct as, as a, a create, cre creature. Then, uh, if you see that the big truck, <laughs> big truck coming to you, you may feel that the fear. Yeah, fear itself is just a warning. But if you governed by that kind of emotion, worldly desires, you cannot be a person who has very happiness. That's why you need to know the emotion, the worldly desires, which come from body senses, are not yourself. They are just a kind of signal or warning sometimes. Please uh, take care of them very kindly, okay? So your bodily senses are like cats or ducks you feed. They are not owner. You should be a owner of cats and dogs. You need to feed them. You cannot kill them. Fear, worldly desires, uh, something like that. But you can control as owner of mind. That's why all saints, giants, Shakyamuni Buddha, Jesus Christ, telling you how to control your mind in the peace of mind. The more, the deeper you dig your mind, you can find loving mind. Like this. Yeah, you already know that. Structure of your mind. That is the same as the structure of spirit world. To dig your mind deeper and deeper, you need what you need? Peace of mind. Shut out information outside. And find loving mind. Uh, sometimes we have disturbed by the surface of your mind. But if you remove that kind of thought, you can go into deeper and deeper. Then, this is a salt belt. If you have attachment here, salt belt, you cannot go into inside. That's why in the very peaceful situation you need remove your attachment first to the soul. What is the attachment? Attachment is what stick, sticks to your mind. Whenever you have a relaxed time, what kind of thought coming up in your mind? popping up. That is sometimes attachment. You, then, Master said, every evil spirit or Satan sneak into you from that point called attachment. With attachment, there are no such things in enlightenment. Finding your divine nature within. Then, Master said, Please read through again. It is an amazing fact that those who have had this kind of 
ecstatic experience or laughter often decide to live for others. History provides us with many examples of those who experienced the moments of bliss and then had the desire to live for the sake of others. In these moments, people are probably filled with the supreme bliss of feeling one with the universe, of feeling loved by a great being which awakens the desire to share that happiness with as many people as possible. Now you already understand that, because you learned. Your divine nature is love itself. Ecstatic experience means enlightenment. That means the moment you find your divine nature, that is love itself. Loving mind. That's why all religion start from to love others. Love comes from peace of mind. Again, without peace of mind, you cannot love others. because you have attachment. Yes, attachment is the most dangerous enemy that disturbs you to get peace of mind, happiness. Not outside, not your circumstances, not government, not your parents. Only enemy is attachment. When your mind's vibrations are perfectly calm, like an alpha wave, you will find yourself prone to spiritual messages from the heavenly world. It is for this reason that you need to make sure that your mind is free of cause beta waves or rough vibrations. So, yes, it is a time when you realize you have divine nature within. That is loving mind. That is a moment you got higher inspiration from higher world, not evil spirits. Okay? That's why when you practice meditation, before start meditation, we need a self-reflection, remove your attachment, and Focus on the loving mind. Since your mind has a channel, you need to adjust that to lower, uh, from lower to higher in the very peaceful situation. If you feel hard, because sometimes we have uh, a person you cannot love, then crew we already have at that time. Contemplate on that person and understand him or her. Why he or she is doing so bad thing toward you or something. If you can understand that, you can forgive because you have power to forgive others, to love others, to understand others. That's why to destroy your mind, you need peace of mind. Very quiet situation without internet <laughs> or YouTube. <laughs> so that, that's conclusion, okay? Uh, this concludes today's session. Thank you very much.